Next up, we've got the classic Clapeyron equation. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not. Uh, so what this equation does is it describes the relationship between temperature and vapor pressure. Um, so as we increase temperature, we said we increase vapor pressure. Note that this trend is not linear. Um, so for example, if you double temperature, you get a more than two times increase in vapor pressure. Um, the classic Clapeyron says that pressure is equal to capital A, which is just a constant E up to the negative uh, delta H of vaporization divided by RT. Um, e is just a mathematical function. So if you're not sure about what that is, find it on your calculator or um, you know, ask your math teacher. That's one form of the equation. The two-point form is more useful. The two-point form allows us to input two points of data and then find some kind of unknown. Um, and the general equation is uh, the natural log of pressure two over pressure one is equal to the negative delta H of vaporization divided by R times one over T2 minus one over T1. Um, if you look on this equation in line, you might have some places where these are flipped or these are flipped, um, or you might not have a negative here. It's the same equation, just kind of reorganized a little bit. It doesn't matter which equation you use, just don't mix and match them um, because then you're going to end up with the wrong answer. This R here is the same as our gas constant, except now it has different units. Instead of having liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, it's got joules per mole Kelvin. It's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And you can indeed interconvert the different R's into one another. Take a look online about how to do so. And these are essentially just plug and chug type of problems. Right, I'll give you all but one variable and then ask you to solve for the other variable. Note that we have a natural log function. That's what the ln means. So if you have like the ln of x is equal to 5, how would you solve for x? Well, you need to do the opposite of the natural log function is you need to take e and raise both sides to it. So then it becomes e ln of x is equal to e to the 5. And then this e and this ln cancel one another out. So then it's x is equal e to the 5. You can find E up to, you know, whatever number you want on your calculator somewhere. If you plug it in, you should get about 148. So just understand how to do that uh, algebraic um, thing. Let's take a look at an example problem. The delta H of vaporization for hexanes, or just for hexane C6H14, is 28.9 kilojoules per mole. And its normal boiling point is 68.73 degrees Celsius. What is the vapor pressure at 25.00 degrees Celsius? So if we think about our equation, right, this is just a plug and chug thing. The ln of P2 over P1, negative delta H of vaporization divided by R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And then we want to think about what we want. What is the vapor pressure? So we want one of the vapor pressures. It doesn't really matter which vapor pressure you pick. I'm going to pick P2, but just make sure that um, you know your conditions at P2 correspond to T2 and that your P1 corresponds to your T1. And I'm going to need to reorganize this equation to isolate for P2. In this case, I'm going to raise both sides to the power of E. And then after that, I'm going to multiply both sides by P1. So then that becomes E to the negative delta H of vaporization over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. All of that times P1. And then I start plugging and chugging, being careful that all of my units um, correspond to one another. Remember that R is our constant, so that'll kind of give us a clue about um, what units we need. R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So we can tell we need energy in joules, amount in moles, and then um, temperature in Kelvin. If we think about our delta H of vaporization, we have 28.9 kilojoules per mole, kilojoules. But we need to uh, convert that into joules, so we'll just multiply by 1,000. So you get 28,900 joules per mole. If we think about um, the boiling points, 
for the normal boiling point, 68.73 degrees Celsius. That's the one that's not corresponding to our unknown variable. So since our unknown variable is P2, uh, we'll plug that into T1. Of course, first we're going to change it to Kelvin. So we'll add 273.15 to about 341.88 Kelvin. And then we get the other boiling point um, is at 25 degrees Celsius. So we can turn that into 298.15 Kelvin. And then the last variable that we need in order to solve for P2 is P1. Uh, note that we're not told much about P1, right? We're not given a vapor pressure. So that's a little trick with this question. It were asked for the normal boiling point. Remember, we defined the normal boiling point as the compound's boiling point at one atmosphere. So the normal boiling point here is one atmosphere. So P1 is one atmosphere. So that's a little trick there. And then after that, you plug and you chug. And you should get about 0 0.225 atmospheres as your final answer. Again, plug and chug type of problem. Uh, make sure you take a look, take a look at the work along and are able to solve these kind of problems.